Hi guys and welcome to a brief assembly of spoiler-free thoughts on Dried House Chasm by Jenny Woods. Now, um, before we get into this book, I would like to talk about my previous reading experience with Jenny Words. Um, she's probably best known for the um, Daughter of the Empire series, which she co-authored with Raymond E. Feist. I haven't actually read that one. I did read the first uh, Rift War series a few years ago, but I somehow never continued on. Um, but she has also written the... Um, Wars of Light and Shadow series. This is the first book, um, The Curse of the Mist Wraith. I have actually read this one um, and this was one of those series that just didn't work out for me at the time I was reading it and I can't quite put my finger on what exactly wasn't working with this one. Um, I think it's um, it is a very slow moving beautifully told story and just I somehow couldn't really keep my focus on it and I can't really say why so I just didn't continue it. I might restart it at some point. However, what was very clear to me while I was reading this is that Jenny Words is a very very talented author uh, who writes absolutely phenomenal prose and really knows how to world build. So I definitely wanted to give one of, of her other works a chance. So that is how I ended up picking up To Ride Hell's Chasm, which is a standalone novel, which is great. I love me a, um, a fantasy standalone, and especially if it's um, a standalone by a female author, because I really enjoy discovering um, what the female authors of the genre have to offer. So yeah, let's get into this. Um, first, um, I would like to give you a short summary. So, um, To Write Has Chasm is set in the peaceful kingdom of Cecily, which lies surrounded by mountains and has so far been mostly untouched by all the dangerous stuff happening in the other kingdoms, kingdoms surrounding it. And now Anya, the princess of the kingdom, is supposed to marry the prince of Deval. And this is going to seal a, a promising alliance for Cecily. However, Anya does not appear to her official betrothal banquet and confusion arises because she's not there. And a great search for the lost princess begins. And after a while, it becomes clear that something way darker is hiding behind the peaceful facade of our story than anybody initially thought. Um, and we follow different characters on their search for the princess and like our main character on this search is Mikhail, um, the captain of the garrison, and then we have Taskin, who is the uh, commander of the royal guard. Now, so far this probably doesn't sound that special, but I found that there are a few points that made this book stand out to me. First of all, there is the prose. So as I've said before, Jenny Words writes absolutely wonderful prose and she she has a way with words. <laughs> and um, not always in a way that made it easy for me <laughs> as a non-native speaker because she does use a very wide vocabulary and she will often use complicated words or like more obscure words where other fantasy authors would have used simpler words. That is not a bad thing, um, but yeah, English not being my first language, it can sometimes be a little bit of a struggle. And yeah, if you're looking for um, great prose, uh, then Jenny is definitely an author to pick up. Um, I have to admit I did struggle with the prose a little bit. Um, first of all, as I said, because of the vocabulary. And also, I I can't quite put my finger on exactly what my issue was, if it was the choice of words, but I found that this was a book that I had to commit to. It didn't really flow as easily for me, so I either really had to chew the prose, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, or take care that my thoughts don't drift away while reading. I don't know, does this make any sense? Has anybody ever encountered something similar with a book? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. 
So yeah, the next point I would like to talk about is tone. So um, the book starts out rather lightheartedly, which reflects that our setting is a peaceful country or kingdom. And at first it might seem like you're going to read a fun story. Um, and what I really enjoyed is that uh, Jenny Words has a way of describing the kingdom of Cecily that kind of seems very self-aware of the fantasy genre, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but if it was, or it doesn't really matter if it was or not, but I really enjoyed that aspect. It's some of the, the descriptions almost seem deliberately over the top and like they are to be seen with a wink, like, yes, this is a high fantasy novel, you know? Um, but it never really ends up feeling like a parody. It it feels self-aware, I guess, is, is how I would describe it. And in general, I think that Jenny Words is great at keeping that balance. And also overall, um, often the book and its characters remain a little ambiguous and she also doesn't beat you over the head or spoon feed what she's trying to say. So um, in my opinion, she remains subtle with her authorial, authorial voice and she still expects you to um, have your own thoughts while reading. So, um, so back to the tone. Um, so uh, the tone gets gradually darker and despite the fluffy beginning, this is not a happy book. Um, it gets pretty dark and emotional and yes, I did indeed shed some tears towards the end. And I like how this happens so gradually, so the tone really reflect, uh, reflects the character storylines and the stakes and how they gradually become higher. So I personally don't really like abrupt tonal shifts. Um, and in this book it felt very natural how um, the tone um, got darker. Then uh, next I would like to talk about um, some of our characters and um, to me definitely the most notable character is Mikhail, um, who is charged with uh, finding Princess Anya. And um, because of his prior fighting experience, he is the only person capable of dealing with the current threat to the kingdom. Now, what is important to keep in mind is that Mikhail is black. Um, first of all, um, I really um, enjoy seeing um, main characters of color in books by white authors, especially if you consider that this is not exactly a new book. Um, so, uh, because of his skin color, uh, Mikhail actually faces a lot of backlash in Cecily. So, um, he hasn't been there that long. <laughs> so, um, and the, the, the people of Cecily are pretty racist and they have a lot of prejudice um, against him. And the thing is, uh, Mikhail is not an easy person to be around. And he is also sometimes a frustrating character to read about. And the thing is, he is somebody <clears throat> with a very clear moral code and he will break rules and laws um, to do what he thinks is right. So he is not a bad person, not at all, but he sometimes, um, sometimes the way in which he acts seems a little extreme if you don't know why he's acting the way he does. And um, uh, we as the reader don't have the full context from the beginning and most of the other characters have even less context. So it's often understandable that they have a hard time um, letting his behavior pass. And um, what is of course important is that this is no excuse for the racism they show. And um, this book, um, it has a lot of, a lot of political intrigue and it is interesting to see how these stereotypes ingrained, ingrained in a societal system will hinder processes that would be important in the current situation just because people cannot look past their beliefs. So, um, I've said that often Mikhail does not follow the rules of Cecily's society and 
It's understandable how other characters have a hard time trusting him because of that, because, I mean, he broke rules and didn't follow the law. Um, but the thing is, um, if he would explain that he broke the rules because of X, Y, Z, then they probably wouldn't believe him either because of their um, prejudice and their lack of knowledge of the world outside of the tiny kingdom. So I think the, the lesson here is that he can only fail in the eyes of Cecily's society if he wants to do what is right. So yeah, that was definitely a very, very interesting aspect of the story. Um, and speaking of what is right, um, what is right and how far you can go and what is okay to do while trying to achieve a goal um, that is rooted in what you believe is the right thing to do is a big theme in the book and one that the characters are confronted with and also the reader. So um, if you have watched my video on Book of the New Sun, um, there I talk, a lot of, I talk a lot about how it evoked a closeness to the character by making me feel like the main character and I think this book um, it does a similar thing but I feel like it puts you into the position of a close witness and it directly confronts you with uh, Mikhail's actions and I think um, this was done really really well uh, because as I said you kind of feel the frustration of the other characters but then um, you also feel incredibly frustrated by the way that the characters behave towards Mikhail and the, the blatant racism that they show towards him. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, how um, this was explored in the book. Um, then another point that is closely related to characters is how this book uses horses. So, <laughs> um, I don't really know a lot about horses, but I am pretty, I'm pretty sure that Jenny Wirtz does uh, from the way that she describes horses in this book. And there is a group of six horses um, that is basically, they're basically protagonists and um, they all have their distinct personalities and they are used as characters in the story. And so far I have never really read another fantasy book that did this quite the same way that To Ride Hells Chasm did. Uh, so if you are um, a ho horse owner or like horses or know things about horses, then I would definitely say that this is a book to keep on your radar because um, she really, really does a lot um, with the inclusion of um, those horses and that was really, really interesting to read about. So um, then I also want to give um, uh, yeah, a little bit of thought um, on uh, Anya, the princess. And what I really enjoyed here is that while she is a princess in danger, she never really um, becomes a damsel in distress. She remains resourceful and strong. And even in super difficult situations where she um, is very, very vulnerable, she still, she is like strong through vulnerable, vulnerability, if that makes sense. So yeah. I, I really enjoyed her character, so yeah. And then finally, um, this is also a story about um, sacrifices and about how far you will go when everything has been taken away from you. And I don't really want to get more into this because of spoilers, but to me there was something very raw and personal about the character's stories. And um, in the second jar, um, darker half of the book this definitely struck a chord with me of I don't know maybe primal humanity if you can call it that so yeah mm, overall this is a really well executed book in my opinion and while starting out with a fairly simple concept it evolves in a way that still makes it feel very unique and refreshingly free from overused tropes and 
Um, it does that while also putting a strong focus on morality and a study of the human nature. So yeah, those were my thoughts on To Write House Chasm. Um, have you read this book? If yes, please um, tell me your uh, thoughts in the comments. Or if you have read any other books by Jenny Words, uh, then I would also really be interested in what you thought about them. And yeah, that was it for today. See you next time. Bye!